Hi dear friends, dear students, wishing all a great day and welcome to Gallant IAS. Today's session will be a quick summary of this medieval India. In fact, last year UPSC asked 5-6 questions from this medieval India. So that is very important, you have to prepare it systematically. Before that, I would like to give a short message to all my offline, online students and to all civil service aspirants. Yeah, I'm quoting Einstein here. In the middle of every difficulty lies an opportunity. You my guys have done around at least 70-75 percentage of your preparation you have done last one year. But many of you guys are simply concerned about what you have not done. Please remember UPC has a very definite syllabus for prelims and mains and you must prepare according to this syllabus demand. It should not be like each and everything which comes your way, you are reading, you are preparing. It should be like understand the syllabus, know the demand of the syllabus. According to the syllabus, you do your preparation. Revision is a must for each subject, especially your core subjects like economic history, geography, polity, environmental science. You must have a thorough revision. You should have a regular daily revision. Prepare a daily routine and to do your preparation, do your revision on daily basis. Solve the previous year's questions. Subject-wise, module-wise, you solve the previous year's questions daily. Don't ever think that it's lockdown extended and uh, prelims postponed and you will have a a long sleep like Kumbhakarna sleeping you know I will enjoy sleeping for two months three months and once these uh, prelims declared or prelims date just a day before prelims I will wake up and I will do the revision that will not work out here you will be out of the track so if you really wish to succeed in this examination you have an opportunity and definitely you have to utilize it have a thorough preparation thorough revision on daily basis and definitely you can clear this examination okay thank you now here a quick summary of medieval India medieval India is important for I told you since UPC started asking more number of questions from medieval India you must have a thorough preparation of medieval India at least to one time okay so let's have a look into this uh, summary of medieval India you have to start with uh, mid of the 8th century AD. Yeah, I am starting with the mid of this 8th century AD to, to this 12th century AD. In fact, medieval India continued till this 18th century AD. Beginning of this 18th century AD. You have to study medieval India from this mid of the 8th century AD to 18th century AD. Beginning of the 18th century AD. So the first portion, early medieval India, yeah, which is uh, mid of the 8th century AD to 12th century AD, you will have to study the early medieval history, both the North history and South history, because UPC has frequently asked questions from this area. So there you study the history of regional kingdoms, regional kingdoms, okay. Then Tripa tried to struggle, the struggle, struggle among the three powers. For example, Gurjara Pradiharas of North India, Rashtra Gudas of Deccan and Palas of Eastern India. What were the major struggles, this uh, triangular struggle or the Tripa tried struggle among the three major powers? You have to study one. The Gurjara Pradiharas, the popular rulers, their achievements, their contributions, major military expeditions. Okay, you have to study well. Gurjara Pradiharas of North India, Rashtra Gudas of Deccan, Palas of Eastern India. Major conflicts among these three powers, the major rulers, their contributions to art, architecture, literature, 
definitely the major clashes, the major wars you have to study well. You have to study about the Rajputs. UPSC already asked you questions here. For example, uh, this uh, Prithviraj Chauhan, Solangi ruler, okay, uh, Rani Kiwa. So many questions they already, Kajrao temples. So these Rajput rulers, Rajput states of Rajasthan, the major Rajput dynasties, Rajput rulers, uh, how they resisted these uh, foreign invasions, Turkish, uh, Afghani, Persian invasions, how they resisted. Okay, so these are... Uh, Agnigula clan, non Agnigula clan, Chalukyas of Gujarat, Pradiharas, Chahamans of Ajmer, Kalachuris of Jabalpur, Chandalas of Bandalgan, Tomars of Delhi. So these popular Rajaputta dynasties, popular rulers of Rajaputta dynasties, their major wars, historical wars they fought and their popular resistance against Turkish Afghani invaders, their contributions to art, architecture, literature. For example, these uh, uh, Chandalas of Bandalgand, they contribute, they were the main patrons of this Nagara style of temple architecture. Nagara, Dravida, Versara styles of temple architecture, their subdivisions and their patrons are important here. Then the early history of South India, the South Indian dynasties, for example, Imperial Cholas. Imperial Cholas, Raja Raja Chola, Rajendra Chola. So you how you how to go through the timeline or the chronology of chronology of that Imperial Chola rulers, the popular Imperial Chola rulers, their military expeditions, their international relations, their their diplomatic relations with the Southeast Asia or East Asia with the China, the relations with the Europe. Okay. Popular historians, travelers to the court of these imperial Chola rulers. Okay, you have to study it very well. Yeah, the imperial Chola rulers. The rulers are important for you. Then their major conquests are important for you. Their international relations. Their international relations with the Southeast Asia or their relations with the China, their relations with the Middle East, relations with uh, Europe. That is important for you. The next is imperial Chola, their administration. Imperial Chola administration, central administration, and uh, local administration. Yeah, local administration means the local self government. How was that the local self government functioned? Okay, UPC asked you so many questions from this Imperial Chola and their administrative machinery. Central administration, state administration, local administration. You must have a clear cut picture about Imperial Cholas and their administrative machinery. Uh, then, of course, their contributions to art, architecture, literature. This you have to study well, especially they were the main patrons of this Dravada style of temple architecture. They were the main patrons of Dravada style of temple architecture. So, you have to go through, yes, their contributions to art, architecture, literature. Then further you have to study other South Indian dynasties, for example, Hoishalas or this uh, what is called the Kagatiyas, Rudrama Devi, the movie you might out they can, uh, you you have seen that Anushka Shetty movie, okay. So Marco Polo, he, I mean the traveler. So yeah, Kagatiya dynasty, then this uh, Nayaga dynasty. When you study the South Indian dynasties, Two things you have to take care, the popular rulers, major events during their time, their contributions to art and architecture plus literature. Also you have to take care who are the main foreign historians or travelers, foreign travelers or historians contemporary to these rulers. These areas you have to focus upon. The third module is, yeah, religious movements in medieval India. In fact, UPC asked you so many questions from this module. This is very, very important for you. It's one of the very interesting module also, which is about uh, Bhakti Sufi traditions. Religious renaissance 
or religious revolutionary movements in medieval India. Let me tell you, the Bhakti traditions and Sufi traditions. This is very important for you. Bhakti Sufi traditions. You start with the Bhakti traditions. Alwar, Naina traditions. Okay, Saguna. Nirguna Bhakti cult, Saguna Nirguna Bhakti cult, then you have to go for this, uh, yeah, Veera Shaiva tradition, Veera Shaiva tradition, then you must go for Bhakti saints, Bhakti saints, their ideologies, their philosophies, you will study this Adi Shankaracharya, You will study Statue of Equality Ramanuja, Ramananda. You will study Kabir. You will study Guru Nanak, Guru Nanak and Sikhism. Uh, again, you will study Tulsi Das. Mirabai, Surdas, then this uh, Maharashtra, Maharashtra Bhakti tradition, where you will study, of course, Bhakta Tukram, Ramdas, early Jnana Deva, etc. Okay, so the popular Bhakti saints, Bhakti saints and their philosophies, their ideologies, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bengal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So all the popular Saguna, Nirguna, Bhakti, Zains, what were the teachings, ideologies, what were their major philosophies? Different schools of philosophies are also there. Uh, for example, Visishta Dvaita. Okay. The philosophy of Ramanuja, uh, Adi Shankaracharya, Advaita philosophy of Adi Shankaracharya, Visishta Dvaita of Ramanuja, then Dvaita Dvaita is the, uh, then this, uh, uh, what is called, uh, the Shuddha Dvaita is the, so different different schools of philosophies, different different schools of philosophies or these uh, uh, what is called uh, Vedanta philosophies and their subdivisions. Okay, that philosophies you have to go through because only reason is UPC lasted 10 or 20 years if you check. They asked so many questions from this area. Lot of questions they asked you from this area. Okay, so this is important for you. Bhakti saints, Saguna Nirguna Bhakti saints their ideologies, teachings and their major schools of philosophies you have to go through. A similar way you have to study Sufism. You busy ask two questions, you know, at two frequent intervals from the Sufism. Sufism means, uh, uh, yeah, you should understand the core teachings of core teachings or core ideologies of Sufism. How it became a liberal movement within this Islam religion. Okay. How it was it was instrumental for a change in Islamic religion. Okay. So this is the core teachings, ideologies of Sufism. Different silzilas. Different silzilas of this uh, Sufism. Divisions of sect of different sects of this uh, Sufism. Like a Chisti silzila is there. Uh, Sukhravadi Silsila is there, Khatri Silsila is there. You must go through the different Silsilas, their major teachings, the major followers or the major Sufi saints and their center of like teachings, their main ideologies, teachings, their contributions etc. You have to study very well. This is again very important for your UPC examination. I think I have already done some uh, terminology related questions from Bhakti Sufi traditions already. You just refer such videos also. <coughs> So this module is important. After that, you come across Delhi Sultanate. The very next module is Delhi Sultanate. Yeah, what you have to study is, you have to go through these different, different Delhi Sultanate dynasties which ruled Delhi. Okay, 
uh, and before that you have to study the inversions of uh, Mahmud Ghazni, Mahmud Ghazni and uh, Mohammad Ghori, the major con the major conquest of Mahmud Ghazni, 17 times plunder of Mahmud Ghazni, his uh, court poet uh, Firdausi, uh, or uh, like you see the historian travelers accompanied this uh, Mahmud Ghazni to India, 17 plunders of Mahmud Ghazni, then this uh, Mohammad Ghori, after him Mohammad Ghori, Battle of Tarain 1 and 2 with uh, Prithiraj Chauhan. Then the major causes, political, economic, social, cultural, religious causes for this uh, establishment of Delhi Sultanate in India. Then you have to study the Delhi Sultanate, which is from Slave Dynasty. Slave Dynasty, Khalji Dynasty, then this Tukluk Dynasty, Said Dynasty, Lodi Dynasty. Okay, once again, Slave Dynasty, okay, Slave Dynasty, Khalji Dynasty or Khilji Dynasty, Tukluk Dynasty. Sai dynasty, Lodi dynasty. You have to study all these dynasties and their popular rulers. For example, slave dynasty, Kutubdin Aibak. Major events and major achievements, major developments during his time. Then coming to Tukluk, sorry, Khilji dynasty, Alauddin Khilji, Padmavad. Okay, Alauddin Khilji, his major expeditions, his market reforms, economic reforms, military reforms, social reforms. You have to study one. Alauddin Khilji. Then Tukluk, Muhammad bin Tukluk. Why he is regarded as, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so many novel experiments or maybe, uh, yeah, uh, uh, reforms of this uh, uh, Muhammad bin Tukla, the uh, capital, transfer of capital, then demonetization, so many things. You have to study them very well. Then you have to go for Said dynasty, then there's a Lodi dynasty, Ibrahim Lodi, battle of Panipat, okay, first battle of Panipat with the Babur. So go through it in an organized way. That is very important. UPC asked so many questions about this, uh, for example, Balban and his major achievements. Yeah, departmental departmental administration, you must study well. The central administration is important. The terms are important. The military administration is important. And especially revenue administration. Okay, revenue administration, that is very, very important. You have to study it very well. Okay. Then most important thing is the contributions or into art, architecture, literature. Delhi Sultans and their contributions to art, architecture, literature part is very important. Okay, so these concepts you have to study very well. This is again very very important for your UPC examination. Last 20 or 30 years questions you take. Frequent intervals UPC asked you definite questions from this Delhi Sultanate. Okay, so these areas you have to focus well. Yeah, Vijayanagar Empire and Bamani Kingdom. These two uh, empires also very important for you. Vijayanagar Empire, yeah, Sangama, Saluva, Tuluva, Aravidu dynasties. Vijayanagar Empire that was ruled by different dynasties. Sangama, Saluva, Tuluva, Aravidu dynasties. You must study the story very well. Okay, okay. This, this, this is this is in the 14th, 15th, 16th centuries one of the richest part of the world, Deccani Peninsula. This Vijayanagar or this Bamani Kingdom is one of the richest areas. So you must study their economic history, their social, cultural, political history. Important for your examination. Sangama, Saluva, Tuluva, Aravidu dynasty. The major dynasties, their order is very important. Popular rulers are important. And uh, popular travelers, foreign historians, travelers to the court of these rulers are important. Their observations are very important. Then it's uh, economic administration, revenue administration, it's a uh, military administration, it's uh, it's uh, what is called uh, judicial administration, etc. Very important. Uh, Krishna Devaraya, the greatest of these Vijayanagar rulers and his contributions, achievements, his patronage to art, architecture, literature. Okay, that portion is also very, very important for you. You must have an idea about their major sources also. For example, many people visited here, like uh, these... Moroccan traveler Ibn Battuta visited in the 14th century. Italian traveler Nicola di Conti visited in the 15th century. Persian traveler Abdul Razak visited in the 15th century. Portuguese traveler Domingo Pace visited in the 16th century. And many indigenous sources are also there. Many inscriptional sources are there. Many Indian writers, historians accounts are there. Foreign travelers accounts are there. Then coinage, numismatics. Different sources which help us to study this Vijayanagar Empire. You have to study it very well. Yeah, then this uh, temple architecture is very important. Hambi, UNESCO site and uh, the temple architecture. 
Vijayanagar rulers and their contributions to Provida style of temple architecture, their salient features you have to go through. Then Bemani Kingdom. Okay, Bemani Kingdom, Berar, Bijapur. After the breakup of this Bemani Kingdom, you see a yeah, popular uh, Deccani Sultanates formed, you know. Berar, Bijapur, Ahmadanagar, Golconda, Bidar. So you must know their locations, their popular dynasties ruled and what happened with them, each of them. What happened with each of them in the end, okay. Now the most important module which is uh, Mughal Empire. You know, it's one of the very, very potential area from medieval India. It's a vast area and a popular and a very, very, very thorough understanding of this Mughal Empire is required here. See, Babar, Humiun, Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb. I'm not saying anything. Babar, Humiun, Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb. Your study of Mughal Empire should be like this. You must go through these people. Then, in a chronological order, you can just uh, go through what were the major events, uh, battles, major events happened uh, uh, at two regular intervals, or maybe during the time of these rulers. Okay, Babar, Humiun. Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb. The popular rulers, Mughal emperors, their major achievements, contributions, reforms, major events happen. This you have to study well. Mughal Empire, the economic history, socio cultural, religious, political history you have to study well. Uh, and that will help you to score well from this Mughal India history. Then there is Shah Shah Suri. Shah Shah Suri, his administration, his major military expeditions and his contributions. Then Maratha history, Shivaji the Great and his major military congress, uh, his uh, political clashes with the Mughal emperors, especially Aurangzeb, and his military expeditions and his major administrative reforms. That is very, very important here, his administrative reforms. Then Last but not least, this is advent of Europeans. This is the final module in your medieval India. This is advent of Europeans. The history uh, is changing here. The Europeans arrival and how they gradually established uh, this uh, colonial India here. Okay, starting with the Portuguese, Portuguese, Dutch, uh, Danish, British, French. How these different different European companies arrived here and uh, encroached India or how they uh, established their colonies here or how they made European settlements here and how this medieval history uh, shifting to modern history or a colonial history. This you have to study well. Okay, this is the final module. So in this module you have to study the major uh, settlements like Portuguese, Dutch, Danish, British, French settlements, the causes and consequences of their uh, adv uh, advent in India and uh, how this uh, medieval history gradually shifted to modern or colonial history. So this you have to study here. UPC asked you so many questions from this area also. So my humble request to all of you is, you follow this strategy, follow this strategy. This is the exact timeline of medieval India. This is the way you have to prepare medieval India and don't prepare anything else. If you prepare them sufficient in a very comprehensive way, you can easily score four or five questions from this medieval India. Okay, whatever the number of questions asked you from medieval India, you can easily score. Okay, uh, and further, what I would say, yeah, please do subscribe our channel, join our Telegram uh, channel, I mean, subscribe our YouTube channel and uh, get to the uh, like uh, upcoming videos and uh, other videos. Make your preparation strong. You must have confidence in yourself. Don't ever think. What other aspirants are doing, not doing, think about yourself. Follow a daily routine and to do your job in a regular way, in a systematic way. Solve the previous questions, do a good number of revisions and definitely you can crack this examination. Okay, all the best. Thank you.